Hi everybody, Rob here from the Oyster House Boys and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Moga Grandmother to create uh, a really kind of nice playable and versatile kick drum. Um, something using keyboard tracking which allows you to get a real deep, dark, punchy bass drum uh, down here and it will kind of uh, evolve across the key bed um, so you get something uh, slightly brighter and more lively uh, at the top end. Um, really simple to set up so I'll shift the camera and get a top down view and uh, show you how to do that right now. Okay, so let's have a look at this kick drum sound. Now, rather than go through all the knob twisting here, I thought what would be better would be actually to just, you know, kind of play it and show you where the settings are. And to start with this, uh, you can ignore any arpeggiators and sequences. I'm also going to ignore modulation for now. I don't think that's particularly necessary for a kick drum. So let's start with the oscillators. Now, I'm in sync mode just because I prefer the sound of that, but you can easily change it by turning it off. Um, and I have the frequency adjusted just a little bit between the two oscillators. It doesn't do much, it's quite subtle, um, so play with that to taste. Now, I've got oscillator 1 set to a triangle and it's at 32 feet. Oscillator 2 is also in a triangle and it's set to 8 feet. The mixer, um, you can add a bit of drive by balancing these a bit harder. The, the grandmother in particular, um, it, it will drive for using the mixer. These set to about 1 o'clock for, for both oscillators. And there's a tiny bit of noise just for the kind of liveliness you get there um, with the resonance turned up. Okay, so in the envelope, which is where the kind of the, 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 the power of the, the grandmother comes for making drum sounds, um, is set to a very, very fast attack. It's not immediate, but it's very close. Decay, you can see, is, is set to it's probably about, I don't know, eight o'clock, and the release is to just gone the nine o'clock mark. Now, before I play anything, we'll just go back to the filter section. And I'm set to somewhere around 80 to 100 hertz. Um, and my keyboard tracking is set to one to two. Now tracking means that you get a kind of a darker tone um, to the, the lower end of the key bed and, uh, and some of the highs come through towards the, the, the top end of the key bed, um, which is quite nice because it means that you can play drum sounds that vary across your key bed. But because this is less of a kind of a, a a pitchy sound and um, you don't have to worry about it sounding melodic you just get some of those highs come through um, resonance is set to about 11 o'clock um, which is kind of matching up with our filter cutoff so let's go to what really makes this play which is the sustain so if I have the sustain where it is here and I just hit a note you can hear here that's a, a dark but you know it's got some bite to it and up here hoping you can hear that kind of rings through so sometimes you get a, a, a kick drum which has um, a bit of a kind of a, a, a I don't know what it's called but it, it plays almost at, it's almost like a bass note um, after the initial like after the transient hit so you get that sound and you don't hear it down here because the highs are being cut off but up here it rings through and this is all controlled by the sustain so if I lift the sustain further you can hear that becomes pitchy and if the sustain is right off, then it's uh, hardly, hardly heard at all. And we want that to die away quite quickly, which is why the release is set, you know, down the, the, the further, the, the lower half. So you can hear with just a few real simple settings, and I actually have just a tiny bit of spring reverb uh, added in there, which does help. I'll turn it off. There you go, if I turn it up too much. Sounds like you're in the wrong room. Anyway. That's as, as simple as it gets, really. Uh, there's not much more to show. Um, that's how you make a kick drum on the, the Mode Grandmother. Um, and I think it's a, it's a good sounding kick. There are no effects or anything on this. This is recorded straight into Logic, um, along with my mic, and, um, and that's it. So hopefully this has been of some use. Obviously, you might be watching this and you might not have a, a grandmother to hand, you might have a, a software synth or you might be using a different hardware synth. But if you look at the kind of the footages and the envelope, that's what's important. So if you take what I've done here with those things and apply it to what it, whichever synth you're using, then you'll be, you know, you're along the road at a good distance. And obviously this is music, so do whatever sounds good to you. Um, I'm helping you kind of understand how to make various sounds, um, but it's what you do with them which is important so go out make some cool music uh, and please let me know what you've done uh, leave links all that kind of stuff 
Thanks very much. I've been Rob. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.